Welcome back. As we continue to learn more about COVID and its impacts naturally, that raises many more questions. Yeah, joining us with answers, Dr. Ruth Berger, an infectious disease specialist with UT Health San Antonio. She has been instrumental throughout this pandemic, helping us separate fact mm -hmm. from fiction. And there's a lot of information and misinformation out there. Dr. Berger, and as always, thank you for joining us. You know, when we first learned about the Omicron variant, health experts said the cases would peak kind of around this time. Are you seeing evidence that that's happening in our community? Right. I wish I could tell you that it's already coming down, but I just checked out our city of San Antonio dashboard. The progress and warning indicators show that the rate of rise is certainly slowing down, um, but we're at 39.4% positivity in the community. That's up 1.1% from last week. Um, however, if you look at the preceding week, um, you know, we were rising at a rate of like 8% per week. So the rate of rise is slowing down, which signals to me that by next week, we may well be looking at a lower community positivity rate. And I don't know about you, but that gives me hope and I feel encouraged. But we haven't started going down the hill yet. Yeah, but I, I, maybe that's a good point to make that when you talk about the hill, right, there's not just a steep decline right there. It's just little by little it decrescendos. That's right. I mean, even if we are going down starting today or tomorrow, it took us a month to get to the top of the mountain and it's going to take probably an equal amount of time to get down. So people still need to be really careful. Right. So now let's talk kids, because we know that a recent CDC study showed that kids with COVID are more likely to develop diabetes. Is this an issue of causation or correlation? Do we does the science really understand why this is? So we're still unpacking that. Thanks for the question. It's something that we've been noticing here in San Antonio as well. We've seen it in our community and in our population. And we know that it turns out that diabetes follows um, other kinds of viral infections with greater frequency. For instance, it's well known that hepatitis C infection can predispose people to getting diabetes or having diagnosis of diabetes earlier than they otherwise m might. And we think the mechanism, generally speaking, is that it um, increases inflammation in the body mm. and that certain kinds of inflammation can predispose people to getting diabetes. Um, the data are pretty striking. Uh, a large cohort of kids that had had COVID that were 18 years or under uh, were looked at and they were monitored for the development of diabetes. And the rate of diabetes in these kids was compared to the rate of diabetes pre-COVID and to a group of kids, an equal number of kids that didn't get COVID. And what they found was that the, the kids that had had COVID were developing diabetes at about 0.8%, I mean, compared to 0.3% in the kids that didn't have COVID. So uh, more than twice as many kids who had had COVID were coming down with a diagnosis of diabetes compared to the kids that hadn't. Mm. That is striking. All right, how about the new Omicron subvariant that people are talking about, this stealth Omicron? Experts have seen it in 40 countries so far, including the United States. What do you know about BA2, or like I said, the stealth Omicron they're calling it? Well, the main thing that I know about stealth Omicron is that it's not surprising that as long as we are allowing COVID-19 to propagate through populations and not controlling it, it will mutate. That's what viruses do. And generally speaking, the variants that will emerge are going to be the ones that are most successful in propagating. And that's going to mean variants that are more infectious. So it's not surprising at all. What we don't really know is whether this will be significant in terms of um, making people sicker. What's the difference between a variant and a subvariant? So that depends on how closely related they are genetically. So they do genetic sequencing and look at the RNA sequence and the subvariant would be something that's really closely related to the one they're referencing. So. Uh, an Omicron subvariant is going to look an awful lot like Omicron and not look like Delta. So it's going to be clear that the lineage of this virus is one that has been derived from Omicron. Okay. 
Let's talk about Moderna now. I want to switch gears for a second. They announced that they're launching early stage clinical trials for an HIV mRNA vaccine. It's a shot that basically uses the same technology as Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine. You're an infectious disease doctor. I know that HIV and AIDS is, is something that you have, have talked to us about on this program before. Can you tell us what you know about this Moderna breakthrough apparently? Well, I think it's exciting. Uh, I wouldn't call it a breakthrough until we have more information. I actually did some of my infectious disease training when I was an infectious disease fellow. I worked on HIV vaccine development, and this has been a very long story. HIV is particularly difficult to uh, create a vaccine for because HIV, unlike Omicron, unlike COVID-19, it has a sneaky way of integrating itself into your DNA and hanging out there. And it has all sorts of tricks for evading our immune system. So new technology definitely needs to be brought to bear on the HIV problem. And this is an exciting development and we'll see how it plays out. Am I correct in the fact that that the, the reason that this vaccine for COVID was able to be developed so quickly was because the mRNA technology had already been used in, in some of the research on the HIV AIDS uh, outbreak? Well, mRNA technology has been around for quite a long time, not just related to HIV AIDS. So I wouldn't draw that direct line, um, but it, it should be emphasized for our public that the mRNA technology um, didn't happen just overnight since uh, January of 2020. It's been under production for a very long time. Absolutely. Dr. Bergen, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate all of your insight and the fact that you keep coming back to talk to us. Thank you. You bet. Have a I, good evening. Thanks, Dr. Berger. And I also appreciate when my co-anchor uses the word decrescendo. That's <laughs> nice. We'll be right back after the break.